morning, Jeff. Welding is art. You always want to make sure that the weld looks beautiful. And that takes a lot of training. I'm working on that every single day. For me, it is uh, art. When I weld, I get in the zone. Hey, Sarah. Are you on a call? I'm in a deep part. Oh, sorry. Okay. I was just saying welcome back from vacation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Morning, Tim. How are you? Well, how are you? Good. Morning. Morton Industries was really founded on the principle of doing metal fabrication for large OEMs. Hey, how are you? Hey, Mary, good. How are you? Good. I just wanted to give you an update. Um, so everything is across the pond, and they are reviewing everything. I don't have any feedback yet, but I hope to get I grew up in the suburbs of Detroit, Michigan. In 2008, came to Morton. I had an opportunity to be president of the company, and it was then when I really discovered that there was a difference uh, here in Morton uh, versus what I grew up around. Morton. It's really a small town that's around a bigger city. And what that's afforded us is in the small town, we are about 17,000 people in Morton, is you get that community feel. And one of the things important to us is that we have a family feel to our company. I've been here 13 years. I love it, you know. Good people, you know, we all like family here. I have been here almost 10 years. My favorite part uh, is working with the people every day. It's going on about six and a half years. I think everybody is like family here. Been here four years. 14 years. We got an awesome group. Been here 14 years. Been at Board Industries for 23 years. I just started here three weeks ago. So far, so good. I like it. From supervisor down, they're all nice, really. They have a good crew. Part of the reason we've been successful is because of the community. We have such a great culture that people want to come work here, and our customers recognize that. They really love to be able to pick up the phone and, and call somebody at the top of the organization if they have a concern. But we have competition all over the world. We're in the Fab 40, which is um, magazine that distinguishes the largest fabricators and we just actually cracked the uh, top 10 in the last two years so we're really proud of that. It means we're one of the top 10 uh, tubing and sheet metal fabricators in the United States. We're really excited about being part of the automation movement. We have our first three collaborative robots in the company where you literally work inside the cell with a robot. Seventy-five years ago, when my dad and his brother started in business, uh, I don't think they had any idea what it would become. Right there, that's my favorite photo. Yeah, this is the original first photo we ever had of the company with uh, my dad in the middle, my uncle Cleo, and Carl Mendel. Mendeled here. That was only employee, one employee, because it's the only picture we have back then. So that's the original, February second, nineteen forty-six. 
1946. He started business in February 2nd, 1946. And actually, we, the picture we think was taken in 1949. Verdon started with his brother, Cleo. And they worked together for the first four years of that business. So they started the business together right out of the war. Both of them were both in the war. Verdon was in Italy, in the Air Force, and a mechanic. And so we'd talk about how he built a water heater in his tent in the service. And the officers saw that he built that water heater to take a shower and whatever else, that they wanted one too. So he built the water heaters for the officers, and that kept him off the front line. So he got to be back in the back, and he became a mechanic. He was there until 1944-45. remember him telling us is that he, when he got out of the service, he wanted to have his own company. That was very important to him. Dad only had a seventh grade education, but he was a hard worker, and he got into that business being a welder. We're standing right where the house was at, right here. But the original building was up in that corner, right on Jackson Street. And that's where he walked to work every day from that house over to the plant. He actually had a ringer hooked up where mom, all she had to do is touch a doorbell and it would ring over in the shop when uh, lunch was ready. So he would buzz her and he would run over at the time. And when, if you came in at lunchtime with, when Verdon was there, he says, you'd have to wait an hour. He says, I'm going to lunch. So he'd make the salesman stay. So he had, it didn't matter who was there. At noon, he went home and ate. At that time, we were still small, probably had less than 20 employees. And uh, we were a welding shop. We learned how to weld out there, learned how to cut metal and shear and paint. I think I probably painted I will a tell lot. you, I painted more than anybody. Uh, not me. <laughs> I painted town. more than you did. Way <laughs> I more. Painted, I painted a Way lot. more. Dad would have been the president. He was the person in charge. And uh, Art was the manager of the tube bending. And, you know, we probably had 40 employees or 50 employees. It was about 1970, 71. He had enough. He called me up after I got out of college and was working up in Chicago. He called me up and asked me to come back and help take this company over because he said, I just don't want to do this anymore. But when Art quit, I was very nervous. I was young. I was 24, 25. That's when I had to step up, have a meeting with my key people. I remember having the meeting yet today. And, and uh, Art's going to leave us. We're going to have to do this. We're going to have to do it on our own. We had to make it into a team. It wasn't that what that didn't come automatically. But everybody pitched in, and I, you know what, it went really well. I had a lot of good people working for me that stayed with us. Russ Argadine is one of them. Duke Amy, or Russ, Jeff. Morning. I've been at Morton Industries for a little over 40 years, back in 1981. I got involved with Morton Welding. Um, I was going to college and working part-time at a grocery store and uh, wheeled in one day and filled out an application. I asked the lady up front, is there someone I can talk to about this application? Just so happened the owner, Jim Rinkenberger, was walking by. I didn't know who he was. He was about 30 years old. And she said, Jim, this fellow would like to talk to you about a job. And uh, so he stopped and he looked at the application and he said, What's the matter, are you tired of the grocery business? And I said, no sir, I'm looking for full-time work. And he goes, oh, he flipped the application back at me and took off and I thought to myself, who's this kid? I, you know, I don't wanna to talk to him, I wanna to talk to the boss. Little did I know, he was the owner. <laughs> What's your name? Russ. Hey, it's Russ, oh. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you, you too, Jim. I'm all right. I'm all right. How are you? It's, it's been a long time. Yes, it has. Yeah. We built that company up from 25, 30, 40 employees, 100 employees. When we get up to 150 employees, and we really learned and developed into a, not a welding shop, but a manufacturing company. And then I came out of college with a degree in computer science and started out doing uh, software in the, in the office. And we uh, started buying computer CNC equipment. 
My first piece of equipment was a tube bender, and it didn't work very well. It was always broken, and it was, yeah, it was just didn't, always it was terrible. And we bought our first CNC lathe. lathe, and that was a little scary at the time. I think it was remember because well, we had to maybe. borrow fifty, forty, fifty thousand dollars at the time to buy this right. lathe, and we didn't know if it was going to make money or what it was going to do. And, Basically, had that lathe paid off, and I think in about six months, and yeah. and it, and it improved. We had purchased another one, and another one, and another one, and the fun part was trying to get to that next level. About 2004, for me, I was ready. The company was way bigger than I ever thought it would be. I retired. The ownership journey at here at Morton Industries has been very unique. The Rankenbergers, of course, owned it, and um, then it was private equity for a while. And while it was private equity, um, that family feel would go away. The p folks wouldn't feel as secure um, in their company and their job. And we're fortunate that Chris Ober recognized that. When he started, it's kind of a saving grace. Um, he feels a, um, a link, if you will, an appreciation for, for the original ownership. And he honors that. And I think it's a real positive for the company that that happens. Verdon loved to come out in the shop and just see what was going on. At <laughs> <laughs> he used to come out and he would get on that little three-wheel scooter and drive around up and down all the aisles and watch all the, I mean, the employees knew who he was and here comes the old man, you know, and up and down you're going. The infamous three-wheel trailer that my dad took around. He probably enjoyed, that was <clears throat> probably his biggest treat is being able to go around that plant because he didn't have a plant like that. Yeah. It was a really, it's a neat place. Morton Industries has been a really strong company for the last 75 years. And we're really excited about what the next 25 years are gonna bring. When we have young people come in and become our employees, it's really a foundation of our future. I'm 23 years old and I've been here for three years. I started training and uh, helping other people out after a year and a half working here. It can be a bit intimidating at first and not knowing anyone, not knowing how the whole thing goes. But I think what matters is just the confidence that you try to give the other person, especially when they're new, that you know they feel at home. Yeah, the culture in this company is very nice. It's very welcoming very caring. They're looking out for every employee, you know, that you train someone, they learn stuff really well. And just to have that confidence from the company, it just shows how, how caring and how supportive they can be. Look, if I have an opportunity to thank the founding family and I wish Verdon could hear me right now, I just want to say with a lot of sincerity how grateful I am of him and his sons and his family who put so much work into creating this company. I'm really honored to be the one to take it from 75 years to 100 years.